the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know who I am. You know what I'm here to do. I'm here to Rah! join me as always, Xavier Guerrero and Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. How are you guys? Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Back in the saddle again. It's good to be back <laughs> in the studio with you guys. Welcome back to town, Sam. Good to be back. Uh, you know, it was good to get away for a little while. I needed to... Uh, Decompress, but you know, thank God the LA uh, airport is such a piece of shit. It just put me right back to stress. So, you know, a week off, one day back in LA, and I'm already stressed. Was it bad, really? It, I, I'm convinced it's it's built to to annoy you. What the, the traffic or just the? Ever, just they design, have construction. Ever. They have construction. You got to go to the side to get your Uber. It's a shit show. Yeah, it is, and oh, it's done purposely. Mm. Then you hear just sounds, but I don't want to get into it. I've yeah. already talked about that before. But guys, a lot of amazing things are going on here right now. First of all, the big 500th. Yes, the big 500th episode. <laughs> Boom. Uh, is now up. You just go to samtriplee.com and you can grab your tickets. And when the tickets are gone, the tickets are gone, man. There are two gone, shows. Gone, gone. Now, you, if you buy tickets to both, you put in the uh, the special code, which is TFH10, I believe, and you will get uh, $10 off the total purchase. And buy them now. It's going to be a real fun party. Let's do it while we can because who knows what's coming. Come join us uh, once it sells out, and I believe it will. I'm going to try to do something on Friday as well, but we'll see how that goes. If you are in uh, Marietta, Murata, Mar Murrieta. Murrieta. if you're in Murrieta, uh, <laughs> right? am I right? Yes. Um, on August 26th, I am doing a show there. It is, I, there's a, it's almost sold out. It's not a big room, but it's almost sold out, so it's one show. Then, that's uh, August 26th, September 3rd. We are in Spokane. There is a no mask man. Right now, there's no vaccine passports happen to be there. Okay? We're not going to do a show if there is. Uh, right now, they're not asking for it, so we are moving forward. Tacoma is sold out. It's sold out. You can go try to buy tickets, but they told me it's sold out. Spokane is available. And then I'll be in Simi Valley on the 8th. Again, once those tickets sell out, they sell out. So grab them now because when they're gone, uh, both Merita and Simi Valley, I'm working on new material. So go check that out. We got a bunch of T-shirts available for you folks. Oh, real quick, last thing. So, Tim Fall Hat, man, make sure you... There's also the comedy show. So, we have a 7 p.m. Uh, the 500th is at 7 p.m. And then the uh, stand-up comedy show with Eddie Bravo, Xavier Guerrero, myself, and someone's going up and doing their first set. Woo! Johnny Woodard will be joining us. <laughs> Grab your tickets. So, make sure you get both of those. Yeah. Uh, the Tim Fall Hat t-shirts.com. Uh, the, the new one, Disobey, is there. Oh, shit. People seem to love it. I love that face. And we're going to be working on getting a limited edition uh, a breakfast of chicken steak, up, which I love. There'll be a limited edition. Once those T-shirts are gone, they are gone. All of us here have premium content. If you can't get enough of us, there's more content out to you, and it's all available at rockfin.com. R-O-K-F-I-N.com. I have four to five shows on there. Uh, most of them, I'm doing two shows each, okay? It's all $10. You get my shows. You get Xavier Guerrero shows. You get Johnny's Broken Sim show. You get Johnny Woodward Presents Broken Sim with Johnny Woodard <laughs> and his trusty uh, uh, intern, Sam Tripoli. Okay, go check that out. That's available. Greatest of all time, uh, sometimes. Greatest of all time. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're full all the time when Johnny would just hit record and I'll do it. Yeah, he, all you gotta do he is hit record. That, hey, but when I ask him, he's like, uh, not today. No, that's not true, Johnny. But go to the rockfin.com. Uh, if you go to samtriple.com, you can check out all the links. There's Tinfoil Hat. There's Zero. And then there's Conspiracy Social Club. And if you let's say you haven't heard Conspiracy Social Club, all you gotta do is go to uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to Apple Podcasts, and you can go to the vault and hear free uh, older episodes. And then if you like it, you want to hear new ones, just go subscribe on Rockfin for the new ones. Did I miss anything, guys? Nah. We nope. got new Broken Sim uh, dropping today. You, yep. I hope. Just I, don't forget the tickets. Don't f- Get grab em. your tickets, man. It's going to yeah. be the 15th and the 16th. The 16th is the actual show, but I'm working on something special for the 15th. I'm, I'm trying to get Brian Callen to come out to do all, the 100th of Conspiracy Social Club once the uh, Saturday shows are sold out. All right, guys. Uh, this is a great show. Uh, Jim Lee, who studies weather warfare, uh, this is a banger. Xavier Guerrero has put him up for the... Yep. The 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 uh, Mount Rushmore. The Mount Rushmore. What's that? that what, how, what's that in Spanish though? What, what did he say? Mountain in Spanish? Montaña. 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 Rushmore. Rushmore. La montaña rusa. Montaña Rushmore. Joe Montaña Rushmore. Okay. Uh, enjoy the show because it's a bang. Super excited for this show, so let's get into it. This gentleman is, um, you know, he's he is an expert on weather warfare. I, I'm, I'm all in right there. He has a website called The Climate Viewer. You can go to climateviewer.com. I'm very excited to have him on. Please welcome the man, the myth, the legend, Jim Lee. How are you, brother? Pretty good. Want to fight about it? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. For our listeners who may not know you, brother, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm uh, 45 years old, self-taught, uh, married, got two daughters. Um, I hear you guys are into mixed martial arts. My my uh, 11-year-old daughter just got her orange belt in MMA from the World <laughs> Martial Arts Federation. Hell yeah. I told her, I told her she could date when she could kick my ass. And, and <laughs> 101 and zero right now so she's gonna have to really uh <laughs> bring it before she can uh ask for the keys but um you know i do i do a lot of research on weather control and climate change pollution privacy and propaganda the three p's i find pretty in, important and um you know, I was a Boy Scout, so I do this as my good turn daily. Everything that I do on all three of my websites, climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, which is Climate Viewer Maps, and weathermodificationhistory.com. Everything I do, including my videos, are all creative commons, non-commercial. You can download them. You can do whatever you like. They're completely free. So, um, you know, I just ask for support on my Patreon, PayPal, and you know, I do all this for because I love what I do. I'm a nerd, and um, I remember everything I read. Unfortunately, and you can't, there are some things you just can't unsee. Um, a rotten.com, if anybody can remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like this is this is my 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 fun place, and uh, I enjoy talking about it. So uh, you know, you got questions, I got answers, man. So where where does this journey begin for you? Interestingly enough, I was uh, I was kind of you know I was shook by the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown, and I was also very big into Google Earth. Um, so I you know for those who aren't familiar, it's a program you can download and you could put little dots on a map. And um, I started mapping out things like all the nuclear reactors of the world because I was curious. Um, just to see how many were in my backyard and 440 nuclear reactors later, I realized, wow, there's a lot of them, <laughs> which then took me to nuclear waste, which then took me to missile defense radars. Cause hell that's like star Trek stuff to me. Um, and lasers and rockets and all that kind of crazy stuff. 
And, you know, I posted this in the science research section of the Google Earth community, and it sat there proudly for a while, gathering tens of thousands of downloads. It's KML file. It's like all the map dots in one file until the day that I decided to put weather modification projects into my, you know, collection of maps that were all in one. And it was immediately moved by the forum moderators to what they called the other sentient side, <laughs> AKA the tenfold hat forum. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So, um, of course, <laughs> much to my chagrin and, uh, I took it to the, the mods, you know, and I said, you know, this is all well documented. I mean, here's United Nation reports that I pulled these from. Here's the original documentation. This is not tinfoil hat stuff. And um, for those who've ever had an argument with a forum mod, um, let me give you a couple quick pointers. They're never wrong. Their head is larger than the round earth we live on, despite how flat you may think it is. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I listened to your two and a half hour podcast, all every minute of it on flat earth. That was a priceless um, shot fire minute of it. And um, I, I really enjoyed that. And I never listen to anybody's anything. So well, we're proud to be that podcast you for you. And oh, your man, and was... if you ever want to come on debate those guys, we would love that. I mean, I'm looking. I, I, listen, I have no no uh, horse in the One race. One day I might take da- take Dave up on that offer. Um, oh, oh yeah. I would, I would out. love to see that. Yeah, I would just, love just that. To, just, I'll make two quick points. One, <laughs> you know, during the podcast, he said, there are no photos of her. And, you know, he said NASA, Nazi, and all that stuff. Um, well, there is the Japanese Himawari 8. That's Japan. That's not NASA. That's not even the European Union. It's not United Nations. But the Himawari 8 has the highest resolution camera ever put into orbit, and it takes a photo of the Earth every 10 seconds. And the thing about that photo is that I can actually match that up with about 150 different atmospheric sensors worldwide and walk out my back door and look at webcams. And guess what? They all match up. So if that's not a photo and it's all CGI, then insert colorful metaphor um, regardless <laughs> um, i love a capitula- it in a capitulation um climateviewer.org is my map so after this whole google earth debacle you know it really put a fire up my ass to to prove the, to the world once and for all that this is this is not your conspiracy this is conspiracy fact um, you know, that for a hundred years, people have modified the weather that you don't know about it. That's a conspiracy fact. Um, so I, at some point, Google decided to take Google earth away from the world. Used to, you could embed your maps on a, on a website. So I learned to program my own websites. I had Google earth on there and they took it all away. So then I had to find open source software, rewrite the whole damn thing. Long story short, I have climateviewer.org slash 3D, which is Climate Viewer 3D. You can go there. There's a 3D globe. You can see 660 maps, live feeds of earthquakes, fire, smoke, satellite imagery, everything, all same time. Um, and for you flat earthers out there, <laughs> I made a flat earth button, which takes that round globe and flattens it right out. So you can be happy too. Oh, so, um, he's such a nice guy, right? I'm dude? just trying to create a safe <laughs> That's space. That's called reaching across the aisle. He's just trying to get his point That's across. Right. If yeah. you think it's flat Earth, he's just like, I'm not here. I'm Teach here for own. There Teach we go. I, I really don't give up. F bomb free um, <laughs> zone, right? Yes. No, dude. <laughs> yeah, Let them rip, I, bro. I don't give a fuck how you enjoy your information. <laughs> right. um, if you want it on a flat piece of paper, hey, fold that bitch out and <laughs> you know look at those map markers. I'm cool with it. Um, if you like a round globe, you can spin it around fast as you can and um, you know get your groove on. But um, everybody learns in different ways, man. So I'm just trying to make this thing. I have timelines on weather modification history. I got maps on climateviewer.org, articles on climateviewer.com, videos on YouTube, 
and two middle fingers for anybody who disagrees. With me. <laughs> I have respect on that. All right, guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Helix, man. You know what? Most of your life you spend sleeping, and some of you guys don't even think about your mattress. You just lay down and you deal with it. Okay, stop it. There's a solution out there, and it's our friends at Helix. That's right. Johnny, do you have a Helix mattress? I do. I do. Yeah, I love it. Helix Sleep is the best, man. I got it. I have two of them. I have two of them, and they're both great. You know, I sleep in certain ways. Johnny, what do you sleep? I think you sleep yeah, what? I'm a, I'm a side, Knees side. by your head, right? <laughs> yeah, is that a, how you sleep? I'm a side back sleeper, yeah. Yeah, well, how do you sleep, Xavier? On my side. On your, I'm Straight a slide side sleeper, too. I definitely go fetal position sideways. <laughs> That's how I sleep. And, of course, my dog gets, bam, right in the corner. <laughs> so I have no room. I pay for everything. I have no room. But guess what? I have a giant bed, so I don't care because Helix is taking care of me, man. It is very important whether you, you know... Dude, I used to have a really junk bed, and I just got Me the too. worst sleep, dude. And thanks to Helix, I sleep on clouds, okay? And how did Helix know what I want? Because they have a wonderful, wonderful quiz. Johnny took it, passed yep. it with A's, okay? I passed it, and I realized I... What kind of mattress do you have? Only quiz you ever passed. Yeah, it is true. It is true. That's that's true. I, I like firm and a little soft at the same time. Yeah, that's what I got too. I got the one that's kind of midway soft. Yeah, you take a quick. It's a two minute sleep quiz. I'm taking mean, it right it takes now. Even less than that. Look at it, he's taking it right taking now, it dude. Right and now, it was dude. simple, easy, fast. And the best part is, you don't even have to go to the store with the. Have you heard about these mattress stores and what they they're thinking they're fronts for uh, some dude. shady shit? Not no, Helix. No. Not Helix Sleep. And they'll rip you off. That's the shadiest thing of all that they do. Maybe it's just ripping people off left and right. Yeah, not Helix Sleep. They take care of you because they're honest people. I've met them. They're good people, and I love them okay so if you're looking for a mattress take a quiz you order the mattress that you're matched to and the mattress comes right to your door ship for free you don't even need to go to the master store fuck the mattress store you can go online and take care of this with our good friends at helix sleep okay so this is what you're gonna do just go to helix sleep dot com slash tinfoil take their two minute sleep quiz I'm okay done already, i'm done he's done he's in he's out he's already got another one coming i'm okay? buying it right now he's buying it right now it's if xavier could do it we can all do it okay <laughs> this is all you do you go to sleep helix sleep.com slash tinfoil and take their two minute quiz and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life and guess what they have a 10 year warranty and you'll get it uh, you get to try it out for a hundred nights for a, on a right. mattress that you sleep on a hundred nights. nights making love on a mattress and this is how much they care for you they'll take back your love man they, they know you're gonna love it dude every night hitting it hitting it hitting it and then you're like guess what i want it i want it. guess what it's never happened in the history of time okay because you gonna, make better love on a helix mattress that's yeah. all i know better love okay helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash timfoam. Okay, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash timfoam. Come on, you deserve to sleep well. So, I mean, weather warfare has been going on for a very long time. Uh, obviously, the United States is a big part of it. Uh, I believe that China has their own, um, you know, skins in the game. So who is behind weather modification and weather war? I mean, we have we have seen, uh, what's his name, Jonathan, who is the guy from the CIA that, uh, the, oh, what was the name of the um, old CIA director? Oh, Brennan. Jonathan Brennan, John Brennan, yeah, uh, Brennan talk about it. Council on for foreign relations yes. about geoengineering. So is this DARPA? Um, Are we talking DARPA here? No, I, I think you just named it. It's got three letters it's called the CIA. So let's do a little history. We'll start with the first documented known case of weather warfare. And that is Operation Popeye. Um, long story short. Jack Anderson, a reporter, walks into Lyndon Johnson's office and sees a little piece of paper on his desk. And on that piece of paper, it says, continue Operation Popeye Weather Warfare over Laos. And he goes, oh, really? So then he starts to look into it. 
release as part of that as part of the Pentagon Papers. Uh, Senator Melvin Laird and company have congressional hearings on all the matter, and it comes out, turns out, um, that Henry Kissinger. Oh, this guy. Oh, yeah. It, it's always him. Um, <laughs> Henry Kissinger, the CIA, and about 19 individuals from the U.S. Air Force and U.S. Navy did weather warfare over Vietnam during the Vietnam War. Their slogan was, make mud, not war. And anybody who's watched Forrest Gump or any of the movie film footage from uh, Vietnam have seen the soldiers, you know, in mud up to their waist. They were spraying uh, silver iodide and lead iodide into the monsoon clouds over Vietnam um, from, let's look at this real quick. Uh, just re- I like to reference my, my own material so that I get the dates right. Is that um, the equivalent of referring to yourself in third person? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Jim will now refer to uh, <laughs> modificationhistory.com as Jim likes to reference his own material. And Jim thinks that this occurred Mar- March 20th, 1967 through July 5th, 1972. Jesus. So for, for literally five years, we were doing whether we, the CIA, Henry Kissinger and his cohorts, in a secret program that not even the, the 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 director of defense, the Department of Defense, knew about. It was that secret. Did it for five years. Nobody knew about it till you know Jack Anderson, reporter of the century, broke the case, and um, and everybody thinks they wanted to kill him over Watergate. I think that it's probably this one that got him in hot water. Um, because after it was brought to light that we were doing weather warfare in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam, um, Russia took note. The United Nations, you know, their ears perked up. And uh, basically, they, they agreed to sign a weather warfare ban. It was called the Environmental Modification Convention in 1976. It was ratified in 1978. And to this day, it's the only legislation on the books that says that weather warfare is illegal. Now, weather modification, controlling the weather, as they like to say, benevolent weather modification is okay. Um, So they put real harsh, you know, stipulations on this. Uh, For it to be considered weather warfare, it has to be long lasting and has damage as a as a causal you know relationship for why they're doing um loss of life life and limb things like that um so even when you go forward to today like um you got the united states naval research lab which i interviewed at the um, 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification in austin texas i went to the ams meeting the american meteorological society I interviewed them. I, they were saying, well, it's okay for us to use heart to make a plasma fireball in space that lasts an hour because it wasn't long lasting. Um, Dude, so I don't even know what you said there. What did you just say? <laughs> that heart creates a plasma fireball in space. When did they do that? This was uh, 2016, I think, something like that. Uh, one sec. So as you're looking that up, China has talked about creating a second sun. I mean, is this what we're talking about right here? I mean, th- that's, a, that's a totally different kind of project. But, yeah, I mean, event, <laughs> essentially that's where, you know, HARP creates densest artificial plasma cloud November 12th, 2012. Um, and that was when they created a fireball that was, uh, you know, that lasted over an hour um, that they basically as long as they had the, the, the HARP ionosphere heater up in Yukon, Alaska, um, as long as they had all those antennas focused on that one spot and shooting power into it, there was a fireball. The minute they turned it off, fireball gone. Um, so that's their 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 explanation for why they're not violating 
the you know in mod uh, treaty the weather warfare ban because it's not long lasting. I mean, we didn't hurt anybody. I mean, ELF waves, extremely low frequency waves, screw with people's brains and everything. But you know, we were just making a fireball, bro. Um, you know, we want to reflect some freaking radio waves over the horizon. So we make artificial ionospheric mirror, um, basically using space, using, you know, the ionosphere of our planet as a weapon system, you know, as a communication weapon system. Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at Athletic Greens, the most comprehensive daily nutritional beverage I've ever tried, okay? With so many stressors in life, it's difficult to maintain effective nutritional habits and give our body the nutrition, nutrients it needs to thrive, okay? Busy schedule, poor sleep, exercise, stress, or simply not eating enough of the right foods, okay? This is where Athletic Greens can help, okay? Their daily all-in-one superfood powder is your nutritional essentials, okay? It is by far the easiest, most delicious nutritional habit that you can add to your health routine today and empower you to take over your health okay own your health ownership of your health that's what we're talking about i can't recommend this enough to friends or family okay one tasty scoop of athletic greens contains 75 vitamins minerals and whole food source ingredients including a multivitamin multi-mineral probiotic green foods blend and more that all work together to fill in the gaps in your diet, okay? Increase your energy and your focus, aid with digestion, and supports a healthy immune system, all without having to take multiple vitamins, multiple products, okay? So this is what what's going on right now, dude, okay? Right now, Athletic Greens is doubling down on supporting your immune system during these spring months, okay? They are offering my audience free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packets with your first purchase. If you visit my link today, you're basically never have to buy vitamin D again. Okay. I just tell all my friends, all my family, I drink this every day, every morning, kickstarts it, my day, getting my multi, uh, my nutritional greens and getting my multivitamin, multimillionaire, probiotic, superfood to kick off the day. All right. I tell all my family and friends to do it. So this is what I need you to do. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash tinfoil and join health experts, athletes, conspiracy podcasters, and health conscious go-getters around the world who make a daily commitment to their health every day. Again, simply visit athleticgreens.com slash tinfoil and get your free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packets today. So let me hold on real quick before we move forward. You know, as I listen to you, uh, talk about all this stuff we're going. All I think about is all the chaos with COVID we're going on. And what all these sheep keep saying is, I trust the science. I trust science. And for me, it, it, you know, you're just saying slogans, but you're really saying, I trust people talking on television. But if you kind of think about like so much chaos in the world, Whatever we live in realm, I think it's a haunted house, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, that that uh, so much chaos is brought on by science and scientists. And, you know, I would love to, like, talk to somebody like, do you know what you're doing? And why are you okay with doing this? And do you not see that this could be used for the powers of evil let's say whatever evil is like used against humanity and are you comfortable with that that's exactly what i've been doing the last decade um the more i learn about it the more scientists i get in touch with um the more i ask them just directly i'm like do you re- do you realize what you're doing um david miles miles research um he talked about steering tropospheric rivers. These are atmospheric rivers. They're water in the sky in these large belts that they can steer, you know, um, using electromagnetic waves. And I said to him, aren't you worried, you know, that, you know, the military is going to get a hold of your technology? And then he goes on to tell me, well, shit, man, that happened. You know, like I was literally, I found bugs in my hotel room when we were doing that thing in Texas that you wrote that article about three years ago. And I'm like, Damn, you know, you just said that in my YouTube interview. This is like gold. Um, 
But yeah, the, Ken Calder and David Keith, top two geoengineers in the world. You, you guys are familiar with geoengineering, right? Yes, but for those who aren't like Xavier, what, yeah, uh, what it, is please. that? Okay. So, so the idea of geoengineering is the, the, the most radical end of the New Green Deal, the, the technocrats basically saying, well, global warming is so bad that we're going to create artificial volcanoes. Do what volcanoes do naturally. We're going to go and spray sulfur, titanium, aluminum, <laughs> diamond dust. There's been many different calcium carbonates. Now the new thing, that's their latest. We want to use that. But the idea that they would spray <laughs> these chemicals into the stratosphere to block sunlight to cool the planet. That's called solar radiation management, geoengineering. Um so for years, I mean, 2012, I was telling the top two geo engineer, Bill Gates, right hand and left hand man, David Keith and Ken Caldera. I said, you know, you guys are creating a freaking weapon. And whether you want to call it geoengineering or not, you're doing weather modification on a worldwide basis. Because if you modify the climate, you inevitably will modify weather. And, you know, they seem to talk down to me as all academics do. And I, I like to call them people hiding behind diplomas, um, you know, all these PhDs. Um, because even though they may have gone to an Ivy League uh, school, they don't have a lot of common sense. 100% um, smarts versus intelligence. That's a common theme on this show. You, I know a lot of intelligent people that have zero smarts. And I know a lot of smart people that are intelligent but it does I mean, just because you're intelligent doesn't mean you're smart intelligence is understanding like systems where as smart as is intuition understanding like things that are unwritten right and i mean likewise just like with the media and the scientists i tell them you know, you don't really know anything about the world till you've been punched in the face yeah, and I, I doubt agree. that you've ever been punched in the face um so they don't really understand the nature of good and evil or they're paid not to. And in a lot of cases, um, you know, when you're begging for that grant money, you'll say anything to continue that flow of cash. So they argued vehemently this could never be used as a weapon. Geo <laughs> geoengineering can, I mean, how could that even be possible? Um, flash forward to 2018 and Alan Robach, another one of the chief geoengineering um, scientists, um, added to his list of 10 reasons why we shouldn't geoengineer. He upped that list to like 22. And right there, line 21, military use of technology. So you know me being the, you know, vengeance seeking little asshole I am <laughs> I go right back to Ken and Dave and I'm like hey buddies remember that time you said it could never be used as a weather your colleague agrees with me now um, in fact I'm reading articles all over the world today saying geoengineering could cause World War III um, geoengineering could be used as a weapon China is creating the largest weather modification system in the world right now on the Tibetan Plateau by the way, that is considered a geoengineering project that could destabilize the entire world's weather. Um, they're going to put 100,000 cloud seeding generators in the Tibetan Plateau. Um, and they also have more dams than any other country in the world combined. Um, so basically, they've dried up the entire Mekong River. Vietnam's not even getting water for the rice paddies, which are, you know, um, causing seawater to flood in there. Um, they're poisoning the water on the Brahmaputra going to India. I mean, it, you, you, everything comes back to China right now. Like China's basically siphoned all of our money through Walmart, you know, idiots in America buying crap we don't need from overseas. And now they're using it to turn, you know, steal our technology, um, steal our, you know, joint strike fighter, uh, create their own, the world's largest ionospheric heater. So they're going to make harp look like a ham radio. <laughs> um, and you know, what we've been doing in America with cloud seeding generators in the Rocky mountains, um, this is called snowpack augmentation. 
uh, or as the scientists like to refer to it, glaciogenic cloud seeding. Um, and the idea is pretty simple. Um, you put a propane tank, you put some silver iodide and some acetone, and then you burn that. And then on, let's say, the western side of a mountain, and as the wind flows up over the mountain, it carries all those little sprinkles up there. And then, you know, all those sprinkles get caught up in the water vapor and snow falls on top of the mountain. They make artificial snow that way. Jeez. So from October through March of every single year in the United States, about I've tracked up to a thousand cloud seeding generators along the Rocky Mountains in my maps. I'm sure there are more than that. Um, every year I find new ones trying to keep my maps updated, but they keep putting them up faster than I can knock them down. Um, but these were invented all the way back in 1949 by a man named Irving P. Crick. And um, I actually heard his name because of a Disney um, cartoon called Eyes in Outer Space. It's all over YouTube. You can see it. And it's a Disney short film about weather control in the future. And it's a technical director, Irving P. Craig. Never heard his name before. Went and found out, here's the guy that invented the ground-based cloud seeding generator. His son is my friend on Facebook now. He says, you know, nobody has ever talked about my dad on the entire internet. And I've learned more about my own daddy from you than I ever did from my own family. <laughs> so I, so I mean, was his dad a good guy or would his dad have good intentions or bad intentions? I mean, he was a hustler, baby. You know, um, <laughs> he was trying. Uh, I mean, water, uh, David, Lieutenant Colonel David Kaczynski, he said it best when he said that uh, water will be to the next century what oil was to the last. And they're calling it blue gold for a reason. It is because unbelievable that this planet is what eighty percent? Ninety. Ninety per? Is it ninety? Is it, what is it? I did. This it's, guy it's, just it's, throwing it's, out it's, numbers. It's here. somewhere in the middle. I, I'll go eighty-five. Okay. All right, there we go. <laughs> what, All right. uh, Johnny, you want to bid a dollar? You want to bid a dollar on this real quick? <laughs> yeah, one dollar. Uh, one dollar. Okay. Seventy-one percent. Seventy-one percent. So oh, I won. You, don't, you, you definitely won. I did. <laughs> Five seconds away from that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like... like we're going to settle this right now. <laughs> you know, and it's just like... It's but we up. can't get desalinization plants that actually can make water that doesn't taste like salt. Yeah. Right? That's what... They, that's um, the next big uh, bubble, too, apparently, is... is or not bu bubble, but investment opportunity for that. You know the guy from the Big Short? He's like all his money... You, you, it says at the end of the book, even, that he's uh, he's in water now. Yeah, you just got to figure out a way, and they'll never let you do it, that just an every, you know, a blue-collar Joe can can turn salt water into drinking water. And once that happens, the, the whole thing crumbles. Well, we've, I mean, we've heard that that technology has been developed and tamped down. I don't know whether we believe that or not. It's like the electric car. It's like the electric car. They don't want it out. They didn't want it out. I mean, let's just let's just put it this way. There's so much money involved in water just in California alone, because what most people think, you know, oh, well, it's, you know, people watering their lawns and, you know, climate change. And, you know, they'll throw a hundred reasons why they don't have water in California. But what they don't tell you is all the fracking that goes on in California. And when your average well uses six to, you know, 12 million gallons of water, to frack a well, and then you've got thousands and thousands of wells, which by the way, also up to 30, anywhere from 30 to 50% of the methane that comes out of a fracking well ends up going straight into the air. So not only are they sucking your water dry, they're pumping methane into the air, and methane is 10 to 15 times worse, greenhouse gas and CO2. I mean, don't you guys see the irony of this? Um, and the other big sucker of water, believe it or not, is things like the NSA at the Utah Data Center, codename Bumble Hive. That's where Hillary Clinton's deleted emails are. Um, that's another <laughs> one that got me in big trouble. I mapped out all of the Five Eyes uh, Stone Ghost Network, which are the NSA spy facilities around the world. 
GCHQ in Britain. Um, it's called Auskins, like uh, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US, UK. Yeah. Um, and in the Utah data center, they literally, the local community was talking about cutting off the water to the Utah data center. Uh, because they were using so much water to cool all of those quantum computers mm. and all of the you know data storage server racks and everything that they have. Um, and they didn't want to pay for it. They weren't paying for the water. Um, struck me as like a, a punch in the balls when I moved to Arizona. And I realized that um, in Arizona, you can't go out in your backyard and drill a well because somebody already owns the rights to all the water under the ground in the entire state. Now here in South Carolina, I mean, it's the garden of Eden, dude. I can literally walk 20 feet, stick a straw in the ground and water's coming. Um, for now, but, for now, I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Meanwhile, they're, they're doing all that fracking. Meanwhile, when there's a little bit of a drought, they want us to limit our showers to five minutes, you know, Oh, yeah, Once or they're like, hey, man, during these hours, turn the lights off. From, like, 3 to 5, turn your lights off. Stop using energy. How about just stop fracking? Yeah. Yeah. How about give us free energy, you assholes? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's. I just feel like all of this is bubbling up, and at some point, people are going to be like, okay. And I just I think you see it happening across the world. People are waking up to what these people are actually doing. I mean, the masks are doing so it right this now. This was this was the big aha moment for me. Like the reason I created Climate Viewer 3D was that, you know, we're all about. We always talk about connecting the dots. Well, for me, those dots are map points on a map, and I had this big aha moment when I turned on the the map layer for fracking. Now I have eight hundred eighty thousand fracking points in this map which is not even not even 20% of the actual number of wells there are. And it still is just mind freaking boggling to look at. So turn on all the wells, the drilling wells, the fracking wells, and then I turned on the U.S. drought monitor, which is a live feed from the U.S. Geological Society. And I noticed how they were like in the same area. And then I clicked on my cloud seeding map. All of them exact same location. So let me look at this circle for a second. The fracking sucks up all the water. The reservoirs end up dried out. Who pays for the weather modification? Sacramento, uh, Sacramento Municipal Utility District. When you're paying your water bill, you're paying smudge. And SMUD is taking that money and giving it the cloud seeding guys. And cloud seeding guys are promising rain to fill the reservoir back up. Oh my. And then the God. frackers suck it up again. Oh, that's cute. Oh my wow. God. I have a list of every single weather modification project in America because, in addition to the weather warfare ban, whenever the weather warfare was done, in Vietnam, another two other things that happened. Firstly, a bunch of bald head old white dudes were like, we can control the weather? Are you <laughs> shitting me? Because can you imagine this? Like you're, you're back in the 1970s and you're going, we have the technology to control the weather and we did what? Um, so they, they ordered a, you know, full scoping report. Um, weather modification uh, problem uh, prospects problems and potential um, and this was like it, it was published 1978 weather modification programs po problems policy and potential it's a 788 page volume on every single project that had happened that was funded by the government or private up to 1978 because, of course, you know, all the congressmen were at this point going, what the fuck? I didn't even know this was going on. We could even do this. Can we get a report on this? Okay, order that up, for starters. Um, they also, um, that was in the National Weather Modification Policy Act of 1976.
but they also made what's called the Weather Modification Reporting Act of 1972. So in America, in America, if you go and you want to modify the weather, it's as simple as filling out two forms. And they're both no, um, they're for NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. But the forms are uh, NOAA form 17-4 and 17-4A. So the first one's called the Initial Report on Weather Modification Activities. So it says things like project or activity designation, if any, purpose of project or activity, um, your name, who's, who's paying for it, who's going to do it, and how long do you plan on doing it. And you follow that report up with the interim activity report and final report. And in it, it says things like number of modification days, number of modification days per major purpose, increased precipitation, alleviate hail or fog, other, I mean, that's just a creepy wide open category, other check. <laughs> We're really screwing with some farmers today. Um, hours of opera, of appara- uh, Hours of apparatus operation by type, airborne or ground. So you have um, like the, like I said, glaciogenic earlier, you have other types of um, orographic is the actually uh, what they do with the the mountains. They have glaciogenic. There's several different types of cloud seeding flares that they can attach to planes. Um, Even in uh, in, uh, Vietnam, um, they had the cold cloud modification bomb that was created by the Naval what? Warfare. Yeah, the Naval Warfare Center at China Lake, California, at China Lake, California Air Force Base or Naval um, Air War Center. They still to this day practice weather mod- weather warfare techniques um, for the Air Force. It's Wright Patterson Air Force Base. But I digress. No, China um, then, Lake is interesting because they just had a giant earthquake right there. Oh, and, yeah, and, and everyone and, was bringing up just like weather modification. That's also the U.S. Naval Research Lab. And they are, you know, the designers and engineers of HARP. Um, so it's, it's no surprise that they would be testing, you know, those types of technologies. Infrasonic, infrasound weapons or um, also classified as earthquake weapons. Oh um, my God. We could really get off on a tangent if we start getting into directed energy weapons on this. Oh, show. dude! Now you speak my that's language. I know a lot about <laughs> and like I, you know, I, I let, let, let's just let's follow me for a second. So you fill out this other report. Type an amount of agent used: silver iodide. Carbon dioxide. Wait a minute. I thought CO2 was a problem. They're talking about dry ice. So dry ice is another major cloud seeding agent. Right there on the NOAA form. This one's actually dated 2007. They've updated the form since then. Looks exactly the same. Carbon dioxide, silver iodide, carbon dioxide, urea. Anybody know what urea is? It's from urine, right? Yeah, it's uh, piss. It's it's fertilizer. They so we use golden showers them. to create sh- golden showers. Correct. Wow. So I would, that one really bastards. that one really surprised. And I mean, I was like, dude, it says urea on the freaking report that you fill out. The modified. You just know order. somebody's a weirdo in this group, or all of them are weirdo, and they just. <laughs> Hey, can we get this in I mean, this dude? We know same, you like it. It's the Sam Tripoli of their crew, you know. Oh, it's like, oh. Johnny. Hey guys, can we? Uh, you went you know? too far. What You're... about what about urine? Sorry, I mean, Jim. Like... He's a he's an open micer. He doesn't understand <laughs> comedy. Go on. <laughs> Mister Mister had a Miley Cyrus look like uh, urinate on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, like you know, li- literally, you know, they're they're they're. they're um, you know, I guess, you know, if you're going to go and you're telling a farmer that you're going to make it rain on his crap, you, um, crop, you might as well, you know, throw some feces and urine in there <laughs> in the mix. I mean, hey, man, <laughs> we're going to fertilize it while we make it rain. You know, um, man, you brought up some, you know, I, I know you don't want to get so much into direct energy weapons, but I'm sorry. I think that's weather modification. And, you know, you bring up China Lake, earthquakes. 
And I've been telling people, man, the what has been going on in California with these fires? I've lived here for 20-something years, and I have never seen like the amount of fires we've had lately. A lot of discussion of high-speed rail systems. A lot of discussion of China trying to come in and, and take the land where we grow mar- a lot of marijuana. And just... It, you I've know, been through weed, California. Yeah, so it's like, so it's like people go, people call me crazy, man. I was on morning radio shows going, dude, these fires make no sense. You can sit there and try to be like, whoa, whatever, but it's like they don't make any sense. They're very specific. If you really right. want to take this the, this land, the best way to do it, because it would cost you billions of dollars to buy all these houses. You condemn the land, and the best way to do it is burn everything down. And Jim, you're smarter than I am. Am I off on this thought that these houses are burning, but trees are perfectly fine? Somewhat questionable because, you know, you say that to people, they're like, well, it's a drought. And I'm like, well, if it's a drought, why are the trees okay? That because they have, is, <laughs> that's not helping your argument. Well, I'm like, um, the, well, then why are the trees there? The, well, they have water in them. But you just told me it's a drought. They're like, dar, 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 dar. you know, it's just like, what are your thoughts on that? I, I have so many thoughts on it. Um, it could fill an hour. Okay, let's condense this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pee in your Kool-Aid. Then I'll play along. Yeah, well, we've um, already established we're into that. <laughs> yeah. It, it's going to be urea showers from here on out. Um, have you ever heard of hack and squirt? <laughs> sounds very sexual. Sounds like a category. <laughs> <sexual. laughs> Poor dog, but go on. <laughs> yeah, only, only in his search history. Yeah. <laughs> only on <laughs> X hamster, to be honest with you. Go. Hack and squirt. Okay, so... In California, Oregon, and Washington, they practice what's called hack and squirt. Now, I'm sure they do this other places, but this is how stupid people are. Um, so the geniuses in the climatard industry who run the state of California, Stan, um, thought it would be wise to get rid, get rid of invasive species trees. So what they do is they go up and they take a hatchet and they hack a little bit of bark off the side and they make a little V-shaped cut in the side and then they squirt round up into the tree, directly into the, you know, the veins, the heart of the tree. And then they just walk the fuck off and let it die. And then they go and they tell everybody that they shouldn't do any forestry management. You shouldn't go out there and clean up the dead wood that's all over the ground, which is like common freaking sense. Um, so what they've actually done is create a tender box. Yeah. It's man-made. Now, I've talked about this for several years. I was kind of tickled shitless when I heard um, Donald Trump, like literally, I, I forget where I heard it, but he was, you know, he went to go see some fire damage and he's like, well, you know, if they actually did proper forestry management out here, then <laughs> this wouldn't be happening. Because the bottom line is whether you believe that directed energy weapons from space or somebody's intentionally lighting the fires or if it's just some, you know, nefarious scheme to do some disaster capitalism, regardless, if you don't have the, the, the you know, the tinder box, then you can keep it under control. Now I'm going to really fuck with you. Oh, shit. Back in 1842, the very first entry on my timeline on weather for, uh, weathermodificationhistory.com is a guy named James Pollard Espy. He was known as the Storm King. He worked for the U.S. Navy. Well, I mean, he was a weather guy, and he created the first U.S. Naval weather map. What he did that's important is that he, in a very large symposium, proposed the idea of lighting fires in the forest all along the West Coast to create rainfall for the rest of the United States. Jesus Christ. 1842. So, all right. So we got people hacking and squirting. We got dudes from way back when talking about making fires on the West Coast to make rain on the East Coast. We got breadbasket in between. Flooded to death. 
in between the fires and the floods over there, the Rocky Mountains, which are being covered in artificial snow from October to March of every year, because of the form I just talked about, I can tell you exactly who paid for it, when, and why. And I take all of those reports and I turn them into maps. So I've literally mapped out from 2004 through 2012 every project that occurred just to get a kind of a grand idea of what the hell is going on. And you see the same thing. So basically the, the, the grounds, the ground based cloud seeding generators turn on in October, they turn off in March. So all winter long, they're creating artificial snow on top of the Rocky mountains, which melts in the spring, which then feeds all of the rivers and tributaries. And by the way, floods the hell out of neighboring States. In addition to that, we get these golf ball, basketball size hail all through the winter um, on the East Coast. And people are going, where the fuck this come from? Well, guess what? You know, there are people literally from if you go straight down the Mississippi River and you go west, everything on that west of the Mississippi weather modification projects east of the Mississippi they're in a damn one. There were back in the 50s and 60s, but they realized it was kind of freaking pointless. Um, and as time progressed, night, cloud seeding was invented in 1946 by three dudes, uh, Bernard um, Vonnegut, Irving Langmire, and Vincent Schaefer at the General Electric Laboratory. Um, and basically... Uh, Vincent Schaefer had like a refrigerator sitting on the ground and he breathed in it and stirred his finger around. I was like, shit, I got a good idea. And that's how cloud seeding was invented. You can't make this shit up. Um, <laughs> what? So that, seriously, that's, it was that simple. Like he dropped a couple, then he dropped some dry ice crystals in there. He's like, huh, shit looks, looks like chemtrails to me. I just made chemtrails in a freaking refrigerator. Let's go do this thing. So they went out, they did the silver iodide and the dry ice. And uh, less than a year later, they did Project Cirrus, which was the first time that the military and these idiots tried to steer a hurricane. Oh. So in less than one year, 1946 to 1947, Project Cirrus occurred. They were already trying to steer hurricanes with cloud seed. And then by 1967, we were using it as a weapon of war. So cloud seeding from 1946 till today has always been the, the choice weapon of war. Oh my what God. do fires create? They create a lot of soot. If you look at chemtrails, like I, you know, I gave you guys a list of bullet points and these, these I'm just kind of like working my way you know, gently through some, you know, try to squeeze a little bit of all this in randomly. Um, the whole chemtrail problem actually started in 1958 and it was in Palm Springs. It's a, a newspaper article, Palm Spr Springs gripes because um, Jed's dim sun. So a lot of people are going, well, you know, this is a relatively new thing. And I'm going, shit, man, I've got article after article decade after decade from 1958 on saying we got a cloud problem here. People are, you know, dumping chemicals in the sky, making clouds. So 1946 cloud seedings invented. Dude dumps some chemicals in a refrigerator. Looks like chemtrails to me. 1958 Palm Springs pissed off. They got too many clouds in the sky. Air force actually responds to them. 1959 tells them, either live with the trails or move the city of Palm Springs. <laughs> I have the newspaper article. You can go to weather modification.com slash newspapers. Um, 1970, the state of Illinois and New Jersey sued the airline industry for making clouds over their cities. What city did this? New, Jer um, New Jersey and Illinois. Oh, the states? Oh, my. Yeah, both states sued the entire airline industry for making clouds over their their cities. Um, they they at the time they called it black belch or pol um, smoke pollution of the sky. 
they didn't have the word chemtrail back then. Uh, that word wasn't actually on the internet until 1997, and the first article ever written about the word chemtrail was talking about JPA jet fuel and the United States military. That's a story for another show, um, because it's some real dirty shit. I mean, if you tried oh to put gasoline, if you try to put diesel fuel in your gasoline-powered Mustang, uh, Ford Mustang, you probably would have the same result. Um, that putting going from JP4 gasoline to JP8 diesel fuel and all these jet lines, which now are clouding the sky, which um, curious, curiously, did you know that as much as 93% of the COVID related deaths or serious, um, you know, We're serious all health effects? Ourselves. Are related to vitamin D deficiency. Yes. Yep. Yes. So let's put a whole, let's tie a big bow on all this. So let me get this straight. <laughs> Ray, are you guys ready for the punch in the nuts? Yeah. Because well, well, it's coming. Lyndon Johnson, we talked about him, weather warfare, right? Right. This is what Lyndon Johnson said. It lays the predicate and foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather. And he who controls the weather will control the world. It is unbelievable. It is 1962. What I also want to add to this is your Bill Gates guy. What does Bill Gates want to do? He wants to do what? Lower CO2 levels, right? And he wants to block out the sun. What do plants need to create oxygen? Sunlight. Sun, and CO2. Photosynthesis. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, and like everyone's like, okay, well, you know, tell us your plan. Like, that's my plan. Well, well, okay. I mean, you wear sweaters in the summer, so I think you know what you're talking about. <laughs> he's getting ready for that ice age he's about to make. Yeah, um, just snow no. Snowpiercer is going to be a reality, baby. Um, now Bill Gates actually he the two guys I mentioned earlier um, David Keith and Ken Caldera he came up with this thing called Bill Gates came up with Pfizer F I C E R the Fund for Innovative Climate Energy Research and basically it was like a big honey pot for geoengineers and basically the geoengineers would have to go and beg David Keith and Ken Caldera you know, for money from Bill Gates. So they were the ones who actually distributed the funds. And um, as a result, you know, all these people came up with all these ideas. Well, you know, we could, you know, we could, you know, maybe we could mess with the chemtrails that we're making already, the contrails, the plane farts, whatever you want to call them. The plane farts. Um, <laughs> Whatever you want to call them, it doesn't matter because after they fan out and cover the sky and block out the sun, that's a fucking cirrus cloud. C I R R U S, cirrus cloud. Seriously, they're cirrus clouds. It doesn't matter what you want to call them, how they were made, whether you believe it's a pump or a pipe or the jet fuel. I personally tend to follow the science and uh, the science of like 60 years worth of reading over a thousand plus scientific papers clearly states that all of the metals that they're talking about is already in the jet fuel and being burned out the back. So that's why we've been making clouds. By the way, um, a Dr. Florence Van Stratton back in 1958 was in the back of a United States Navy plane and took carbon black dust, threw it out the back of a plane and made clouds. She then took wet forms of carbon black dust, squirted it out the back of the plane and, you know, made little puffy clouds. And then they used the same carbon black dust to get rid of the clouds. So, They've known that carbon black dust, which is soot, basically, it's the same stuff that's the toner in a laser jet printer. You ever seen that black shit? Yeah. If it gets on you, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so carbon black dust is at its molecular level. It's like a, a big bundle of grapes. So it actually is really good at abs two things, absorbing heat and making rain. So water sticks to it very quickly quickly 
And because it's black, anybody set your ass on bare ass on a black car in the summertime. Oh yeah. You know, the black things absorb you. Yes. So that gave, um, William Gray, the idea in 1972 through 76, the idea to steer hurricanes, carbon black dust absorption of solar energy was the name of the paper that they could dump massive amounts of soot and carbon black dust into a certain portion of a hurricane to steer it. So then you flash forward to 2008 and Obama gets into office, signs the climate agreement with all the technocrats at the United Nations Paris Accord COP21. And um, the same year, Bill Gates and Ken Caldera and Edward Teller, Roderick Hyde, and Lowell Wood, who is known as Dr. Evil, who invented the geoengineering and the hydrogen bomb um, at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, all of these guys get together and come up with a pat to steer hurricanes. No shit. Bill wow. Gates, Ken Caldera, Roderick Hyde, Lowell Wood, um, Edward Teller. Well, so so here's the here's the kicker. In 2008, they had the Department of Homeland Security Hurricane Modification Workshop. Workshop. And no shit. And at that workshop in Boulder, Colorado, is February 6th through 7th, 2008. They had all these people show up. And guess what? Like five of them were geoengineering dudes. Um, one of them was from the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. One of them was Mosh Alamaro from MIT University. And he walks in the door and says, Hey, guess what? I think it would be a great idea to dump carbon black dust into these hurricanes to steer them. Same thing that was said back in 1972. So what you when you start to learn all this history, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it. That's the slogan on my website. Um, because the more I, I learn about the history, the more I realize that everything that's going on today is a recycle of it. So riddle me this. 2008, they have a hurricane modification workshop, the purpose of which was climate change has gotten out of control and Katrina was bad. So the Department of Homeland Security should be in charge of protecting our oil fields and critical infrastructure. So maybe we should do something about these damn hurricanes. And uh, Noah said, um, you know what, actually, we, we don't want to do anything with that because we did Project Cirrus, Project Scud, and Project Storm Fury back in the 1940s through the 70s. And we really sucked at steering hurricanes. In fact, we actually made one turn around and run into the state of Georgia doing $3 million worth of damage, killing people. Um, so we don't want to do that again. So instead, uh, NASA and a couple other, you know, three letter agencies jumped on board and they pushed forward with this thing. Then we had a 10 year hurricane drought. This is, this is the 10 years from 2008 till 2000, mm, right about 2016, actually started 2006 technically because 2005 was Katrina. So the day President Trump gets into office, that hurricane season, what do you do on day one? He canceled the Paris Climate Accord. He canceled the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He shat all over the, the technocrats that wanted this one world bureaucracy. Um, look, look up technocracy if you don't know about it. I'm not going to explain it all right now. I know what it um, is. XG's lost, but English is the yeah. second language. So yeah, anyway, some slack. The, anyway, so <laughs> the point I'm trying to make here is he canceled their agreement that was basically going to solidify this one world order the, the technocrats have dreamed about for uh, since the 1930s where scientists would rule the world through an energy-based economy. And when he did that, magically, three major hurricanes huh. hit. And all the states where all the rednecks that voted for him were. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. Am I a conspirator? Should I put my tinfoil hat on now for even saying it? Probably so. Yeah, but, welcome, bro. You're like the bee in the uh, 
Blind Melon video. You're like the little bee chick. Come hang out with your crew. Vibe with your tribe, bro. <laughs> I love that song, man. You, my favorite many, thing about... Lyrics, too many jokes to be made out of that. My favorite um, thing about uh, directing these hurricanes is, I, I, in my heart of hearts, I believe they use the old uh, Atari uh, controller, yeah. which the, is with just the button, yeah. with the with the button on the top. <laughs> yeah, 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 I had that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like one red button. Yeah. Have, have you seen my logo on um, weathermodificationhistory.com? No, what is it, dude? Let's go look. Let's go look. Oh, there, there's a, there's a joystick involved. Oh yeah, really? And I'm not talking about a penis. <laughs> Um, but that's actually from the cover of the 1954 Collier's magazine. And, um, you know, oh, yeah. we kind of cut it out. It's been used in a lot of memes since then. Um, <laughs> that's a great, but it actually comes from James Roger Fleming. He also used it as the cover of his book. Um, world's top historian on uh, weather modification. What's the um, website again? Weather modification and history.com. History. Yeah. Weather modification history.com. And um, that 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 comes straight from a 1954 magazine cover, you know, where a guy's literally looking over his shoulder and he's got the controls right there and he's, um, you know, flipping it around. Um, so you, you can't make that stuff up. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's unbelievable. Look at that. We just live in crazy times. I uh, dude, every just listen to you. I'm just like, I was right, dude. This is a haunted house, and there's a bunch of actors trying to scare everybody all the time. All the time. Whether it's false Pretty flags, much. whether it's weather. I mean, it's just their whole job is to steal our louche and drive us crazy. And it was working for some of us. It's working. I mean, yeah. like, dude, when you sit there, you go, how much of this chaos weather is man-made? Oh, well, it's uh, global war. No, like, how much are these fucking scientists in these shady-ass organizations pulling some shit? And you're like, almost all of it. Yeah, so that's kind of my whole thing is, like, you know, I talk about, I, I tell people all the time. Don't tell me shit about climate change unless you know about the climate changers. And these people have been intentionally changing the climate for over a hundred years. If you go back to 1900, even Jules Verne, 1889, to till the, uh, the, 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 to tilt the planet and melt the poles. To 1912, when they talked about making nuclear powered, or um, uh, what was it, make uh, dams in the Bering Strait to send the uncooled uh, Pacific waters up to melt the poles, to nuclear powered propellers to send the water up to melt the poles, to atomizing the Arctic and by UNESCO in 1945. Oh, by the way, they did that. They blew up, you know, several thousand nuclear bombs in the North Pole. Um, to uh, two Russians saying, let's put a sodium potassium metal ring around the planet to reflect sunlight and melt the poles. By the way, they did that too. It was called Pro Project Westford Needles. Oh, my um, they God. They put 480 million uh, copper dipole needles into space, some of which are still in space. Um, the guys in the little uh, Hubble or uh, space station have to dodge them all the fucking time. Um, and the rest are all in the North Pole. It's considered to this day to be the stupidest scientific experiment <laughs> ever um, devised. They Project should be Westford. known as the dumb scientist. <laughs> like yeah. the dumb and dumber of science. Like you just oh, walk man. around with a lab coat on. This was, this was done by our United States military. And... Uh, on top of it, they failed like three times. They had three different launches and they failed to deploy on one. And they're like, man, eh, fuck it. Put more needles in the rocket and shoot it back <laughs> up there. We hate the ionosphere and that thing's unpredictable. We want to create our own ionosphere that we can reflect our radio waves off of um, that we can rely on. So that was, you know, but that's eerily coincidental to the, 
you, the two Russian dudes who were like, let's put a metal ring around the planet and melt the poles. The fuck are you talking about? We're not trying to melt the poles. We just hate radio waves going where we don't want them to go. So we're, that's what we're doing here. Um, so basically, you got 50 years of people talking about in public with no shame. Let's turn the North Pole green so that we can get to the oil and gas and make it like a tourist paradise. Um, and then, it, you know, um, JFK comes into office. They come out with this paper called Restoring the Quality of Our Environment. And then there's this flip side of the coin where all the technocrats go, no, wait, we should save the Arctic because global warming is a thing now. And that was one of the first mentions of geoengineering and steering hurricanes and micro bubbles and microfilms of oil on the ocean to keep evaporation from occurring and all kinds of crazy shit. So you got these two warring factions. You got the ones that want to melt the Arctic to get to the oil and gas. And then you got the ones who want to save the Arctic because polar bears and shit. That's what you see in the commercials, right? (laughs) That should be a t-shirt, polar bears and shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, that's already copyrighted, baby. I'm oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, he knows that. He knows us too well. He knows us too well. I, I, I've done I've done over seventy thousand t-shirt designs. I you know Jesus I've worked in Christ. different t-shirt shops. Yeah, I've been a graphics artist since. Um, what about the polar bears and shit? Back. But the polar bears and shit are important. Okay, so <laughs> so then. You got these really crazy fucking people who literally do both at the same time. They say, we're the Arctic methane emergency group. We're going to write a letter to all the leaders of the world saying we need to geoengineer today to save the Arctic because methane and shit and polar bears and shit. So let me get this straight. This is, you cannot make this up. This is the basis of all of the, you know, what AOC be talking about and all them talking about the end of the world is near and we're, we're all going to die because of runaway global warming. You ever heard that term? Yeah. Runaway, runaway global train, global warming, runaway never coming back. Um, so here's the problem with that. They literally went to the North pole and they, dr- d- they dug out an ice core. So you imagine like whenever you stick your, your straw and you know, an ice cone and you pull it out if you were to blow that sucker out, you'd have a big straw full of ice, right? Big, yep. right? We got, we got the picture. So they drill these ice cores, and they go mm, right about here is where the dinosaurs were. Okay, we got this. This is where the dinosaurs were, and right here is fucking CO two, and right that's dinosaur farts. That's what that's got to be. <laughs> and then right after the dinosaur farts. It's a lot of methane. And then they start seeing all the numbers. They start doing the calculations. They get their computer model out. And they go, let me get it straight. So methane hydrates. These are frozen methane underground. Shit. Dinosaur farts melted to methane hydrates, which then blew into the sky and everybody knows that methane is 10 times more greenhouse gas potential than CO2. So that caused runaway global warming and that killed a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> you cannot make this shit up. I'm not joking. So they came up with this thing called the clathrate gun hypothesis. And right now you can Google it. Methane explosions in Arctic. Methane explosions in Siberia. Problem with this whole bullshit story. The United States Geological Survey said that uh, methane hydrate runaway global warming scenario, highly unlikely because methane hydrates are constantly bending. By the way, BP oil spill, they drilled into a methane hydrate. Blew the shit out of them. That's what happens whenever you accidentally drill into a methane hydrate. Um, oh, but, really? But, and that's the real that's, story? That's the real story. So Mark Wahlberg's lying? Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> Mark yeah, Wahlberg's yeah. a fucking liar? Yeah, exactly. It wasn't a fucking directed energy beam from space that burned a hole in the top of it. They drilled into a methane hydrate. It exploded. 
and boom, you got a big hole in the, the roof of it and the fire and huge oil spill. Um, Total SA had a the, what's called the invisible spill where they dr- drilled into a methane um, hydrate and it did like 350 million cubic meters um, of methane gas for like almost a year straight. You know, and this, these are just two drilling wells that we're talking about. Back to AMEG's fucking this. And don't get me sidetracked. Um, <laughs> so these assholes go and write a letter to the world leader saying, we believe that a runaway global warming is about to occur. And because, you know, polar bears and shit and all your CO2 and shit and methane hydrates and shit, because dinosaur farts and shit, we've got to stop this now. So we need to geoengineer today, like starting in 2013. They wrote this letter in 2012. And the UK Parliament wrote them back and said, not so quick there, guys. Um, maybe you're a little bit fucking crazy or we need to look into this a little bit more. So that's really when a whole set of hearings occurred. So the UK Parliament had a hearing. And in America, we had three separate congressional hearings on geoengineering in 2012. This is how I met Ken Caldera and shit is because I got those hearings from a deleted page on Wayback Machine um, and put them up on YouTube. And then his group, uh, Google group, found out about it and was like, who is this Jim Lee guy? And why the hell didn't you tell us you were testifying in front of Congress, Ken? Um, and then I got introduced to their group and got to heckle them for like five years. Um, but AMEG, while they were saying to all the world leaders, uh, we want to geoengineer because of methane and polar bears and shit. Um, They also came up with two other ideas that are even crazier than that. My God, what? First of all, the project Lucy, or like I like to call it project Lucy in the sky with diamonds. (laughs) (laughs) Malcolm PR light. And uh, some of the other guys from a Meg came up with the idea of using three separate harp like transmitters, high frequency, high powered microwave transmitters to, as the ghostbusters would say, cross the stream to take three separate microwaves, focus them on methane as it's farting out of the earth into the sky, (laughs) the earth farts seriously. And then, because methane has the same molecular structure as diamonds, that with a 13.65 megahertz signal, that they could compress that methane into diamond dust in the air using three separate hearts, and that they would create diamond dust to reflect sunlight. So they called it um, atmospheric methane um, detection and energization. And the idea was that they would prevent this, you know, whole methane doom scenario by turning it into diamond dust, which would create what are called noctilucent clouds. If you look up what a noctilucent cloud is, basically you've got us here in the troposphere, then you got the stratosphere, then you got the mesosphere, and up in the mesosphere, these are called polo mesospheric polar mesospheric clouds. They look like blue lightning clouds. They only happen over the poles. And their whole idea was, well, shit, we'll just turn that methane into diamond dust. It's going to make knock to loose some clouds. It'll cool the entire Arctic. And uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do it with microwaves. Um, interestingly enough, cloud cover over the Arctic's really doubled and tripled since that article came out and the whole idea was put out there. Oh, and by the way, at the same time, they said creating clouds over the Arctic actually melts the Arctic because what happens is sunlight comes in through the clouds, and then as heat builds up on the ground surface, it can't make its way back out to space at night. So yep. you're actually you're actually putting a blanket over These the Arctic. Fucking and this fucks. Is the, the, this is the third idea, and this is the most fucked up one in all. Oh, it gets worse? I'm, I'm just gonna, but wait, 
There's more. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to slam my coffee down after that one and throw my glasses. <laughs> so the last one was called the Angel's Proposal. Oh, God. Wait for it. I mean, if it's got Angel in the title, you know that they're fucking demons. They always give um, them, like, the nicest names and yeah, shit. Yeah, I want to know whose job it is oh, to yeah. come the up. The better the name, the more fucked yeah. up what yeah. they're trying to do. It's like, know, isn't, look, it, isn't it always true? Tiny babies, lot. you know? Yeah, they're going to rape everybody. <laughs> and, like, if we rape everybody, is there any real rape out there? This is Tiny Baby, a project Tiny Baby. We'll flood the rape market. baby in the woods <laughs> yeah. and nobody's around. Listen, we'll leave... All the babies in the woods, the ones that make it out, are the ones who are meant to survive. Super soldier are we program. talking about the Bohemian Grove? Yeah, yeah. No, let's leave that alone. Um, <laughs> so, the Angel's Proposal. Arctic natural gas extraction, liquefaction, and sales. <laughs> liquefaction. That sounds like liquid, like turning into liquid. Arctic natural gas, liquid. Liquefaction and sales. Are you talking about fracking the fucking Arctic? Okay, so I actually got all of their documentation, and I'm going, wait a minute. You said you wanted to save the Arctic. You said you wanted to get rid of the methane, but you're actually making clouds, and the clouds make blankets, and the blankets heat the Arctic. You're actually melting the Arctic. And now you're telling me you want to save the world from global warming by going ahead and getting the methane out of the ground in the Arctic before it can get into the air and sell it. I see what you're doing there. Now, that's a hell of a good scam. <laughs> it's a hell of a good scam. So if you start to look really deeply into the climate change bullshit, what you really see is that for 50 years, they've been trying real hard to get to the oil and gas in, in the North Poles. If you look right now on climateviewer.org, you can actually see all on the north slope of Alaska, which is technically the Arctic. Um, it's the northest pole we got in America. We've already fracked every damn square inch of it. There are fracking wells all the way across the top of, our, uh, of Alaska. Um, and if you Google and put it in quotes, new cold war, Put that in quotations because it's that exact phrase you're looking for. And then put oil and gas. What you're going to realize is that Russia and America are in a new cold war over drilling rights in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. So you can't have all at the same time. You can't say polar bears and shit, but we want to, you know, frack and drill in the Arctic. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we've been talking about doing this for a hundred years, you fucking idiots, but yeah. you don't know history. You don't yeah. read anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. One hundred percent, man. And you see so, it right now with like, you know, these people two years ago yelling about, uh, you know, showing your I ID to vote is racist, but, you know, uh, uh, not having a, a vaccine passport is uh, uh, going to kill people. It just it, these, these are the same people that'll tell you, oh, but you know, um, you know, but all black people they are because they're really actually fucking racists, and they'll tell you, well, you know, all these you know n words be you know drinking that <laughs> oh, you know, uh, old English eight ball for you know got a forty in their hand and a blunt in the other. Um, well, guess what? To buy that blunt, you have to have an ID. Mm -hmm. To buy that forty, you have to have an ID. Um, I have not met a single black person in my hometown is 60% black people, Sumter, South Carolina, look it up. And we get along just fine in South Carolina, as opposed to all the other racist. Fucking I completely states. agree with you on that. The I South all, gets along a lot better. America, it fucking racists everywhere. And then I come back home and guess what? We've been living together in South Carolina since the 1700s with black people. And we actually celebrate the Gullah Geechee, you know, um, heritage, you know, on the coast in Charleston. And, you know, we have this shooting in Charleston. Everybody's hugging in a church, you know, and everybody is sitting there going, the hell, man, we literally just burnt down Baltimore over some shit. Why aren't you guys doing that? It's like, because we actually live, we're neighbors. You know? Just like, think we all about know this, dude. Other. Just think about um, this, okay? 
They they believe that the dude my dad gets on the internet on his phone. He's 75 years old. He couldn't do do anything on the internet. He could. He would love to. He'd love to be able to gamble and watch pornography. He can't do it. He's not good enough. He's not smart enough to figure it out. It's but it's so easy to get on your phone. It's so easy. My dad can even get on his phone. That's what I'm saying. My nephew is not even four yet, and he knows how to swipe around on a phone. But if you ask people at Berkeley about black people, they're like they can't. They have no access to yeah. the internet. They and they can't get IDs. Yeah. They're like, what do you mean they can't get IDs? They can't get ID. They can't get IDs. But these people are celebrating that you can't do stuff without your passport when it's well known that only twenty, little over twenty percent of the black community, because they have justified skepticism of science and vaccines have gotten the vaccine and now they want to lock out everybody without pa- you literally are the ones who are hurting the black community you know what they want they want the undocumented vote yeah because because yeah because they all, all the democrats cousins. yeah they want all my cousins voting they are they don't got an id yeah, but, they're illegal but, but yeah then, but then dude i'm like i'm sorry but I, I, latinos dude like if you think about that's what, stu- yeah, they're, that's how stupid they are. They're like, well, don't you know that all beaners they love Democrats? I mean, no, don't you know yep. you ain't black if you don't vote yeah, for me? Yeah, they're I mean, idiots, bro. It's like, how much more insulting can you morons be? Do you Dude, know Chelsea Handler people? said that, and I've said this before. I've been told by very good authority that she used to hold up pictures of gorillas on set and tell people it was Lonnie Love's family. I've had multiple people tell me this story. And she's the one like, you're black. You got to vote Democrat. She's a garbage person. She's a garbage person. And if she wants to sue me, I know I'll tell out loud who told me did it, who told me it. And I know they'll come and testify for me. So you could do it. I know it's a true story. And it's complete and utter bullshit, man. Well, dude. So- Go on. So what does this have to do with weather control? Let's 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 tie up on that. Dude, one. Uh, uh, at the beginning of this, I said Chelsea this. Handler's pussy is a black hole. I'm sure that's some <laughs> fucking weather modification going on in there. Now you're well. you're up in the difficulty, but I I think I can I can I can mount this. Okay. Um, Trust me, you don't want to mount her at all, dude. <laughs> pollution, <laughs> draw back pollution, a stump. Yeah. Privacy and propaganda. All right. So what do they have in common? So. If you talk about pollution, whether it's weather control, whether it's pollute, polluting people's minds like they do with propaganda, um, if you talk about pollution or if you stand up for anything, there's an old saying, at first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. If you stand up for anything, they're going to they're gonna make they're going to make propaganda about you. They're going to violate your privacy. They're going to go in. They're going to hack your computer. Um, I actually have documentation. Uh, Monsanto, 810 corn, Paris, uh, you know, activists in Paris don't want it. Okay. This is from the original WikiLeaks State Department cables. This is one of the things that really got them straight up shitting with Chelsea Man. Bradley, still Bradley Man. What? No. <laughs> I got you. I got you. <clears throat> Regardless. Um, no, 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 no. Don't do that. Okay, it's back. I flicked my wire and it's like, we're going to flip to your uh, to your uh, other your, microphone. Like, don't Your you favorites do? list on Pornhub. <laughs> um, yeah, I know. All of a sudden you hear a lot of moaning in the background. Um, so in this, in this State Department cable, they said that basically activists in Paris didn't want Monsanto's GMO corn and that they were going to use the Stone Ghost Network, the powers of the Five Eyes, Signals Intelligence, um, you know, apparatus, all these spy agencies to find out who those activists were and, quote, make a list to distribute pain across the EU and that it should be measured instead of short term, that it should be over a long time process that they were going to harass and intimidate and violate the computers of these activists. The State Department is saying this now to the NSA, to the Department of State, and 
these are activists. These are just regular people like you on Facebook, you know, Twitter, you know, going, fuck Roundup, man. And guess what? The government works for Monsanto. Yeah. And will find you and violate your privacy. Yeah. And then after you're put on that list, they're going to make propaganda about it. if you become a big enough problem, they'll put commercials out. They'll have all of their CIA handlers at the CNN and Fox and all of the other fake news. Cause they're all fake. Every damn one of them. I kind of, I kind of like Newsmax, but you know, even then I'm like, you know, who's pulling their strings. You know, I, I I'm, I'm liking what you're selling, but every now and then I have to like go pinch myself and go, I'm probably being bullshitted here too. Um, but regardless, that's the three P's it's, it's, you stand up for some kind of, you know, issue Whether my issue is pollution. You know, I talk about people dumping chemicals in space, dumping chemicals in hurricanes, quit fucking dumping chemicals everywhere to modify weather. Um, I don't like it. Um, and then but privacy. I've been a hacker since I was 11 years old. Whoa. Being, um, a graphics artist. I got my art scholarship when I was nine. Um, Whoa. so I got my first fo- copy of Photoshop when I was 11 years old. It was Photoshop version 1.0.4.4, and it was on 14 floppy disks. And I was on Trumpet Windsock on Windows 3.1.1, and the only internet in the whole fucking town was in the co- uh, community college, and I would sneak in that bitch and use that thing like five hours a day after school. Jim, so you sound like I a nerd dork. <laughs> I mean, I learned to hack like early, Okay. <laughs> Um, and I've been a security specialist since then. I've done 3D graphics and design. Um, you know, I've, I've designed video games. I've worked with Pic- Disney, Pixar, Industrial Light Magic when I worked in Omaha, Nebraska at Positron Publishing, um, featured in 3D Graphics Magazine, uh, designed a video game, uh, Red Storm Entertainment from Rainbow Six offered me a job. Oh. All self-taught. I've never been to college. I just, you know, I'm a nerd. Okay. Um, the reason I'm saying this is that after like going through this whole making this NSA map and understanding all these issues, you know, being get, getting access to information in ways that most people don't have the ability to find this kind of stuff, knowing how to Google hack, um, did, things like, did you know that you can type weather modification space site colon DTIC dot mil into Google. And what that tells Google is I want to know about weather modification. I put it in quotations, this exact phrase, not weather, not modification, weather modification. I want to know about weather modification and I only want results from the website DTIC dot mil military. Oh my God. And that spits out a list of stuff from now, I've raped many a website in my day. <laughs> Luckily, there are no crimes against this. Um, and that's how I come across a lot of this information. But the reason I'm saying this is that literally, like, I've had BIOS level viruses installed. These are, like, especially sp- for the biggest troublemakers on the planet. And what we're talking about, most people get a virus. It's just sitting on your hard drive you know, they'll write what's called a zero day virus. That means that your virus scanner cannot find it. There are no definitions for this virus. Then you have root kits and a root kit actually lives in the master boot record of your hard drive and starts before windows even starts up. So now I've hacked you at a root level before the windows operating system has started. So clearly your virus scanner hasn't started. So it has full control of everything. Most people will go and format their hard drive and they go and they delete their partition to destroy the master boot record, to get rid of a root kit. Well, that wasn't good enough. Now people are literally like throwing their fucking hard drive in the trash and buying a new one. Well, guess what? They invented the boot kit and the boot kit actually lives on your freaking motherboard inside what's called your BIOS, which is now the UEFI, UFI um, BIOS. Oh my so there's a, fla- there's a flashable portion of your motherboard. Back in the day, we, we used to do this thing where we'd put a virus in the motherboard and then tell your CPU, which runs on five volts, 
why don't you run on 15 volts, bitch? And this <laughs> smoke would come out your box. Oh, that's great. Uh, we are right. in, but, uh, but I deal with, I deal with assholes on call of duty all day long. Talking about, I'm going to boot you off the internet. Yo, I'm going to boot you off the internet. Yo, I'm like, I wouldn't go run your mouth about hacking shit. Cause you don't know what you're talking about. And you messing with the wrong person today, bro, man. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, the, the, the boot kit literally lives on your motherboard and, you can literally throw your hard drive out and put a new one in and it'll immediately reinstall the root kit portion, reinstall all of the drivers at a root level. It actually controls some of the programmable logic controllers on the motherboard itself. It can flip your cameras on your mic on. It can rewrite things as you're saying them to other people. Like I can literally send a text message to somebody and think that I said this thing, but then they're actually getting something totally different because it's being routed through another server. I think that, ha- I, dude, I've written stuff and look back and I go, I didn't say that. I yep. think they do that to make you feel like you're going nuts. That's crazy. When you're tweeting and you look at you like, why is that? Or like, once in a while you'll be typing and all of a sudden you're, you're, uh, what your type just goes, I'm a little, 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 little. you're like, where did that come from? That's psychological warfare, 101. Oh, great. Um, I mean, dude, know, there, I mean, listen, FBI, I mean, like CIA, you know, I don't care. I don't want to be a part of it. I'm just trying to become a farmer. Well, I mean, I was on, um, what's his name? John, uh, John Jones. No, uh, uh mm, oof. John B. Wells. Um, you guys heard of him? John B. Wells? No. Caravan to Midnight? No. Nope. Used to be on Coast to Coast AM? No. Nope. Anyway, um, pretty famous. Uh, I go on his show and we're he's sorry. Like, you know, we're um, sorry. We failed. We're having technical difficulties today. And this has never happened before. And I'm like, this happens all the time when I get asked to go on interviews. <laughs> If this was Brent being broadcast live right now, like that Roger Stone thing, yeah, yeah, Roger yeah. Stone. We had yeah, him we had on Roger and Stone and was, on. I mean, it was the it's most. A kink, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because oh. when you start hearing that static, dude. I I literally can. I, I'm I'm running my phone and I've got a black phone, and um, I'm watching like all these connections happen in between, and I'm like. Hello to the guys at Fort Huachuca, um, at U.S. Air Force CENTCOM. Appreciate you picking up the line. Nothing nefarious going on here. You guys are a bunch of perverts. Keep listening. Um, <laughs> That's why I, I, put out, I, I always put on a show when I'm jerking off to porn. I go, because I know people are watching. <laughs> so I go like, fuck it, laser light show, bro. And I put on a show. I'm like, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, for me personally, <laughs> you know, Put my junk out on the internet. You'd be doing me a favor. I mean, that's not that's not the kind of favors that they want to be doing. Oh, and so you're hung like a horse. Now all of us want that. I'm uh, but, I got I got a know, mean shaft. It just it's it's you know if you got a car trunk down there, ladies, we're not going to get mean, along that well. Cherry Blossom back here is competing for like distance. Okay? Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> with a big dog. <laughs> you're the girl with the drag Those tattoos, are my wet big drink. Red balls all behind me. Actually, I just it's, spit all it's a metaphor. <laughs> um. But, but the point I'm trying to make is that, like, that's why they've been able to get away with doing these sorts of things for 100 years. That's why you've got people retarded enough to believe the earth is flat today. Damn, because dude. You're as just Edgar going Casey out with your put gun it, firing. Until all the people believe that nothing is true, the, the fight must go on. And that's really where we're at. It, this is, I mean, it's a son of a bitch that, you know, the human gorilla, Alex Jones, you know, came up with the, the info wars thing because that's really what it is. It is an information war. Um, it is perception management is like what they really call it outside of the military, inside of the military. They call it, um, you know, information uh uh, no, psychological operations. They call it something that's you know, it would change the psi war and then shit. I'm going to look at my own page now. Jim, uh, I got a jam because I have to go to a, uh, m- uh basically, uh, uh, my friend Brody 
they're uh, he's pa- he passed away two years ago, and they're oh, giving yeah. him a day in uh, Ren- uh, Ronaldo. Where is it? Where are they? Reseda. Reseda. Yeah, yeah. That park. Yeah, so I have to get out of there. So, uh, but Jim, you came, you saw, you super crushed, and I would love to have you on again. We just got to figure out the right topic. We, maybe we can talk uh, hacking and big dongs. He's on. He's on this from Mount Rushmore. I'm on. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Shit. Easily. You're in the. You're bro, in the I mean, running, bro. I'll, you're I'll, in the I'll, running. I'll, I'll, I'll go directed energy weapons and uh, you know what you know, it's just some uh, mind control weapons because. Uh, you know, whatever you want to talk about, man, I'm into it. Um, but I appreciate you having me on and allowing me to have, use my foul language because I, I so rarely get to do that nowadays. Everybody's like, oh, I got to keep it clean. And I'm like, fuck that. Joe Rogan gets to do it all day long. Why can't I talk like hey, I talk in my own house? We, we don't care about what the suits think. And, you know, there's some people who listen that don't like it. But, you know, we got to be ourselves, and that's what it is. And if they can't take a joke, then get the fuck out. And that's really all I got to say. And But we love the swarm. We're thankful that you guys uh, listen to us. And we're thankful that, you know, uh, you know, I don't want, I'm not trying to create a world that is idealistic. I'm trying to create a world where everyone can just be themselves. And that includes talking how you want to talk. And, you know, we're blessed that we have a very... Uh, enlightened group of people who listen to this show and uh, they appreciate our our um, how we how we uh, um, how we attack these issues you know with a sense well, of humor you know because yeah, a lot of the, people the take truth, it all serious the, the true sign of intelligence is to speak to any individual on their level and be understood and if you don't understand a thing well enough, to explain it simply, then you don't understand it at all. So I think that, you know, using colorful metaphors and having some comedy is what is necessary in a world filled with fear porn. And people are so addicted to fear porn um, that they just, they seek it out. I mean, I see these people, they're, they're, I'm, a, I'm a targeted individual and I'm like, you were addicted to fe- being scared. You are 100%. And if it goes back to the whole thing that Buddha said that this is a realm of this, there will be suffering and some people have really easy lives and they are, they're addicted to the suffering through the television because they can't get it in their everyday life. That's how good they are. Jim, yeah. one real quick, one more time. Where can they find you? Climateviewer.com. If you look me up on YouTube, put Jim Lee, climate viewer in there because otherwise you're going to get the dude who draws batman um climateviewer.org and weathermodificationhistory.com um the world's most comprehensive timeline and uh, you can see things like the top 10 technologies used to control the weather today um a timeline from 1800 to present um which is about to be republished probably in the next week um complete with MLA formatting for Google Scholar friendly uh, viewing. Um, we have 875 newspapers on there from 1800 to present. It's the only resource on the internet that has all these facts sans my opinions. So I save my opinions for radio shows like this uh, and uh, obviously climateviewer.com, which is my homepage and my YouTube channel where I say whatever the hell I want. Um, and then, you know, climateviewer.org is where I put all my maps, going to be um, coming out with a new version of that in the future. I have a solution to the whole weather warfare thing um, called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act to actually give the weather warfare ban of 1978 some teeth. You can check that out at climateviewer.com slash nmod, that's E-N-M-O-D. And if you're uh, one of those benevolent souls who appreciates a guy who spends 10 years giving shit away for free, um, please hit me up on patreon.com slash climate viewer or paypal.me slash climate viewer. That's climate viewer 3d. Um, that's my favorite shit. It right looks there. great. I, I love Dude, I love that thing. I nerd that, yeah. the F out. Whenever yeah, oh, I'm that on. is so cool looking. He's Jim Lee. He came. He saw. He kicked some ass. And you are on the Mexicans. Mount Rushmore. You're <laughs> in the discussion for guest oh, of the year. We'll probably so announce proud. it at so the. Uh, Thank you. 
at the uh, the Big 500th. Guys, tickets are available for the Big 500th at samtriplee.com. Get them, because when they're gone, they're gone. I love you guys very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll do it again soon. Take care, everybody. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.